Greetings, Nick Bocock with Sweetwater here, and I'm here with this gentleman, Mark Tremonte. Alter Bridge, Creed, and his alter ego band, bearing his same name, Tremonte. Now, in January 2020, Guitar World came out with this issue, the guitarists of the last decade. They mentioned 20. Mark's not just one of the 20, he got pole position, so much so that they did a collector's edition version with his beautiful face on it. So we're here to discuss what drives this man, what influences him, what makes him become an even better guitar player than he already annoyingly is. So let's roll. Mark, thanks for doing this. Thank you. Thanks for having me. What drives you? Because you've been around for a while and you're one of those guys that keeps improving. Um, you know, it's just meeting, meeting other guitar players that are doing something I'm not doing, you know, um, seeing other styles and trying to develop new techniques all the time. Every time I, every time I try to tackle something, I obsess about it. And, uh, you know, every time, every time there's something you want to tackle, it's, it's just, uh, I obsess about it and just kind of go down the, the, uh, the wormhole and, and uh, try, to, try to tackle it. Now, but you don't have tunnel vision. I mean, you don't have selective hearing. You listen without prejudice, and that comes across in your playing. Yeah, Because you sure. have some pretty diverse influences. Do you mm -hmm. mind mentioning some? Um, you know, I grew up doing the speed metal thing. I was obsessed with, with the right hand, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the, the speed, kind of the Slayer-esque, Metallica-esque stuff when I was a kid. And then as I uh, grew up, I, um, I started buying all these instructional DVDs and getting into the, the more shredder kind of... Uh, Paul Gilbert videos and the Vinnie Moores and the Ingves and all that right. stuff. And then uh, as I grew up even further, I found guitar players um, like Robin Ford and, and um, you know, the modern times, guys like Eric Gales and Joe Bonamassa and guys that take the blues and, and, and are just pushing it to, to new levels. Um, and uh, jazz, you know, every, everything I can get my try to wrap my head around and try to incorporate into into what I do. It's it's a never-ending battle to try to gather as much information as possible. I so remember last time we spoke, you were, you were going to learn chicken picking all the... Yeah, that you know... Did you was, master that? I have not mastered it. I mean, I've, I've, I've incorporated some stuff into my plan. You know, it's... Uh, to me, I've got to decide on what's going to take up all my time. You know, if I find a technique's taking me... is going to take me six months to conquer it's, it better be something i'm really going to dig and chicken picking right. is definitely one of those, those right. kind of techniques um but i'm sure there's much much more ground i can cover in the chicken picking uh territory but um i've i've learned just a little bit so what drives you is it just your love of music because creed sold a, a boatload of records um, so you, it's not like you have to do this to pay your rent at this point i, don't I love writing songs that's right. my favorite thing you know when people um Way before a guitar player, I I, uh, I consider myself a uh, a writer. You know, that's my main thing. And a lot of times, I'm not writing guitar technical stuff. I'm um, just uh, coming up with melodies over easy progressions, and uh, right. that's my favorite thing to do. The guitar playing kind of came along with the territory after gotcha. uh, after doing this for you know professionally for over 20 years now. It's just if uh, if I'm sitting in a dressing room with a guitar, I'm practicing. Right. I mean, because the bottom line is it doesn't matter how good of a guitar player you are lead-wise, mm -hmm. you can't polish something you'd rather not step in with a great solo. It'll be a great solo over a bad song. Yeah, so yeah. you approach it from the song level first, then, the, then everything else comes afterwards to the solo's add the last icing, mm -hmm. icing on the cake. Oh, yeah. The solo's the last. You know, when I'm in the studio, after we've gone through pre-production and I've tracked all my rhythm guitars, I'll go through my list of songs that I have to come up with solo sections for and sometimes it's 12 solos and that's what takes you know 24 hours a day of playing non-stop to prepare for that stuff that's that's usually the race to the finish when i when i finish my rhythms i usually have two or three weeks to get all my guitar stuff prepared for gotcha. final you know for for tracking sometimes i leave it a little loose so i can improvise a bit and then have some guidelines but uh i like to be over prepared and um i'm frantically Coming, learning licks from other players to see if I can add that into my arsenal, and uh, it's just a constant chase to the race to the finish line when it comes to the, the lead stuff. Talking of stealing, mm -hmm. as you put it, yeah. are you an artful thief? Would you say? Yeah, you know, I like to take a lick somebody else has done and just um, uh, take it, take it, and put it in a different key, different set of strings, different phrasing, different just just kind of the idea in general, gotcha. and and. Um, you know, I had a friend years ago tell me, you know, he never, 
he'll learn something, but he'll never play it that way ever. He'll immediately put it into his own right. thing. So he'll learn it and practice it in his own phrase. So it's not uh, ingrained in your memory as this other person's lick. Yeah, so he's basically not, like he's not a folk musical photocopier. He's yeah, actually, no, no, no. He's so, twisting it in some unique way that makes it his. Yeah, and I think, you know, um, just tonally, everybody plays so differently, I think. Um, even if I played stuff exactly like another guitar player, I'm going to have my own... Um, a, you know my own attack on it, um, right? But uh, but just in general, you try to make it your own as much as you can. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to writing, like you've got, like Creed had a bunch of great riffs that I honestly didn't realize, but I teach, mm -hmm. and I had a bunch of kids come and go, "Hey, show me this Creed song." Like, yeah. Damn, that guy's good. Nice. Well, I appreciate that. It's not meaning to be obsequious. What comes first for you? Is it this? Is it the riff and the chord sequence, or the melody that goes over it, or is it a mixture? It depends. You know, a lot of times it's. Um, a lot of times I'll just kind of fumble around on the guitar and as I'm going I'll I'll find a progression that I like and then I'll start singing over it you know I do actually do um, clinics every sh every um, every tour I do clinics about songwriting and guitar playing and and I kind of show people uh, tell people it's impossible to teach somebody how to write songs but I right. can show you kind of some of the ways I go I've gone about it in the past and uh, one is find a, a right hand pattern you know whether it be arpeggiating four strings and then just putting your just putting your your fingers somewhere on the guitar and just until you find something that inspires you start singing once you find that and um, I vocal melodies are my favorite thing to work on that's what I work on more than anything so um, and I you know I, I sing uh, I sing in my falsetto when I write melodies because it's easier for me to do it for six hours straight. Right. And gotcha. I can hit any note gotcha. I want to and I can go on and on. But uh, yeah, vocal melodies are the most important thing. And um, one, you know, like I said, one, one way to kind of uh, break the ice on learning how to, to, to write is, is find a right hand technique. Just, just get it so fluid that you don't have to think about it anymore. And then just throw your fingers at the guitar. And, and even if you don't know theory that well you can just randomly place your fingers on the guitar and see how that technique works under those notes and just keep changing them until it sounds right to you and you develop your filter over the years to uh, come up with new interesting ideas. Cool now when you're when you're adopting that process of sort of like randomizing notes mm -hmm. do you find that your the melody that you're hearing in your head or you're singing for in your falsetto does that guide where your fingers want to go can you hear where the fingers should go or do you create that pattern first then put the melody over it i'll play and i will allow myself to make mistakes i'll have stumbling blocks sometimes i'll tune the guitar open so i don't know where i'm going on purpose because ah. uh, i don't want to all of a sudden come up with say this technique i don't want to go c g and d because yeah, yeah. i'm not a i'm not writing campfire songs you know i want to just place my fingers in some weird some weird twisted pattern that i've never done before and and see how it sounds and um if i'm in standard tuning i'm gonna i'm gonna Muscle play memory. it safe kind of so i so i'll tune the guitar differently and just put my finger somewhere and uh it might take you sometimes 10 minutes to come up with somebody it might take it might be immediate you know gotcha. um and uh, i do it all the time and um that's kind of one, one of the best ways for me to write is just to, uh, just just to dive into the guitar like it's a blank canvas and not think of what I've learned in the past so I can come up with something new and interesting. And um, once I find, and to answer your question about the melodies and what comes first and whatnot, it's usually it takes two or three randomized notes for my imagination to um, think of something that I didn't, that, that, you know, I could hear two notes, I go, ooh, that should go like this, and I'll, I'll see this. Um, idea now that I have to chase down the guitar. Gotcha. So all cool. I need is that inspiration, that that uh, that randomized melody over a certain chord and that chord progression that I wouldn't have thought of. That that in my mind spurs my imagination that I have to go chase down this idea. And one of the things that fascinates about you is the fact that you were self-taught, but mm -hmm. I know later on in life, like you took lessons with like my old friend Troy. Well, I take team. lessons every day with with. Uh, on, on YouTube with oh, other really? guitar players, cool. with everybody. I was just, uh, you know, I just did the Ship Rocked um, Rock and Roll Boat Festival and um, I ran into uh, two, two great guitar players, Ben Eller and Andy Wood, and we ended up just talking shop, um, f 
for hours and hours and hours and I'd, I'd get looks from my wife like, you're gonna hang out with me or talk guitar all night. We talked guitar all night and uh, you know, I, you know I, I was talking with Andy, I said, your picking is he's one of the best pickers I've ever seen. So I was talking about a certain pattern I was having troubles with and he sends me a video, hey dude, check this out, learn this and see if it helps. And cool. so I'm always, uh, every tour I'll go to all the other guitar players on tour and say, let's sit down, let's, 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 let's exchange ideas, let's get better. That's the only way to get really that better is when you're sitting down with another guitar player that's, that's kind of pushing your boundaries. And yes, and I love the way you play it forward as well. Are you sort of driven to do that as well? Like some guys try and hide their no, skills. No, I love. Visual, I love teaching. I love. Uh, I love to see the excitement that I feel when I learn something on somebody else. You know, cool. I don't feel like I'm going to just show somebody an idea and immediately they're going to be the best guitar player in the world. I know they're going to have to work at it for years. You know, everybody has to. And and uh, what I show somebody is just one small little piece of the puzzle. You know, it's there's so many pieces to learn, and uh, you know, we'll be. We'll be on our deathbeds as guitar players, not having scratched the surface of how many things there are right. to learn. What is it? What is they say? The more you know, the more you realize you don't know. Yeah, you know, all the I think all the best guitar players are kind of insecure players because they realize how much, how many great things, how many better guitar players there are out there. And uh, um, like you look at that magazine cover, you got Guthrie Govan, insane, Tosh and Abasi, completely different guitar players. I bet you they can't replicate what either player does at all times. Um, you know, Joe Bonamassa and, and Eric Gales, two incredible blues, jazz, but they, you know, they can, they can play, you know, fast and furious like, like all the rest of the guys. And everybody's got a different style that, that um, everybody wants to chase down. It's impossible to gather all that information in, in one lifetime. Right. At, at least for me it is. Now, have you discovered any hacks? I know you're not a great believer in the remote. I think you believe the fact there's no real shortcuts. Mm -hmm. So what would your advice be to a kid who's, say, watching this, or an older youngster like myself who wants to get better and has no clue or needs some inspiration? What three or four things, what three or four pieces of advice would you pass on? Um, as far as lead playing, um, improvise a lot, even if you think you're not a, um, a good improviser. Um, and you're intimidated by not knowing theory and not knowing wh what to play, I always tell people, you know, take, um, I'll show somebody how to find the key, put on a backing track, find the key of the song. I just go up on my D string until, until it sounds like it's in the right key of the song. Then I know I have my pentatonic box here and I'll show people the pentatonic box. And then um, I would just take four notes, maybe on your D and G string, your fifth and seventh fret, and don't play anything but those four notes. Bend it in every which way you possibly can. Get your nice vibrato, your bending, um, I'd rather hear some, you know, if I went to a guitar shop and I hear some kids sweep or doing sweep arpeggios, I'd, I wouldn't be as impressed as hearing a kid being, having nice vibrato and being able to sing what's in their, their heart on their guitar. And uh, you can do that with just four notes. So learn right. those, just grab those four notes um, and then add a fifth or just go up, you know, take those four notes and play them in different areas of the guitar right, um, right. and just start blooming from there don't don't try to uh don't try to take it in all at once another great piece of advice i got years ago was um don't be overwhelmed by learning all all the keys of the guitar at once take take one master key that's kind of your um if you learn something that somebody's doing in b relearn it in this favorite key of yours so when you're learning theory you've got this one master key that you've absolutely um learned you know from from top to bottom so you can then transpose so mine on the guitar would would be e because it's right. the easiest guitar key you know if you're a country player maybe it's a right you know and if you're a piano player it's c um but uh for guitar to me it's e everything i learn i try to i try to uh incorporate it in the key of e and then transpose from there gotcha. you know? when cool. i was younger especially so it's like ground zero for you yeah cool yeah mm -hmm. Now, what about um, r the dreaded rut that we all hit? Mm -hmm. Any advice on breaking out of a rut or do you just have to persevere? Uh, I think the best way to get out of a rut is um, um, definitely pick up your guitar every day, you know? Um, and I try to do, every year I try to do this and I always fail, but at the new year, um, I always say, no matter what, you've got to pick up the guitar for a half hour, no matter no matter what happens. You know, the half right. hour is nothing. It's not, right. I wouldn't be proud to play a half hour a day, but 
if you at least play a half hour a day, you're, you're going to remember what you did yesterday. You're not going to, you're going to fall back a little bit, but you're still going to be, um, you know, you're still going to be in the mode of what you're working on. But if you take four days off or three days off, you're really hurting yourself as a player. So you got to play, you got to pick that guitar up every day. If you, even if you go on vacation, I try to bring a guitar or just, just something, but, um, your wife probably loves you for yeah, that. Yeah, You know, she understands. Yeah. And, um, but I also think learning something new every day, you don't have to master it, but learn something new every day. I, I, I like to get on YouTube, or I have so many different uh, memberships. I've got the True Fire membership, and right. I've got the Pickup Music membership, and I've got the JamTracks.com memberships, and all these memberships, and I'll go on and I'll scroll through, scroll through all these things and um, try to learn one new thing a day. You know, And, and when you're doing that, um, a lot of times it ins completely inspires you to go in a whole other direction. That and uh, I find that if you're trying if you're trying to learn one thing and you're just not getting it but you're like ah if I just try harder and harder I'm going to get it eventually you just never get it you're going to frustrate yourself and thinking you're just not good enough as a player but then if you go and branch off and do other things all of a sudden you've learned something that has nothing to do with this other thing that's already made this thing easier to do and finally you get it for some odd reason because you've you've diversified your playing and all of a sudden you've tackled this thing that you couldn't do before because you've figured something out and this other technique that got you to the finish line on this technique. So I, uh, I used to do a lot when I was younger is take one thing and just try to drill it until I got it and it would slow me down. So now I try to, I try to choose what's important, focus on it, but then also start learning multiple things at a time and, and uh, diversifying as much as I can while improvising all the time and incorporating those ideas into what I'm doing improvising. That's great advice, great advice. Now to finish, would you mind showing us three cool licks that will push someone, challenge someone, and also improve them possibly? Um, sure. I guess um, in E, right? No. Yeah, in E. No, let's, oh, I'll start out with an easy one. It's not really going to push, but this is, um, I do this thing with uh, guitar players, like I said, in the dress rooms where I'm like, let me, give me your favorite licks, I'll, make, I'll give you my favorite licks. Not necessarily the toughest licks, but the ones that, that you use when you all the time that you f you fall into all the time becomes part of your plan and um, this is a lick that I remember I was playing um, uh, with a buddy of mine and he called me up the other day and he was he's like ah, I still love that lick it's simple but it's killer and um, I'll show you it's uh, so it's pretty much so if I'm in the key of E. I'm just grabbing my uh, major third and bending it every time I kind of come across it. It's like a, it's a dominant. So it's a nice classy yeah, lick. Yeah, that's cool. Um, you know, anywhere you find a... Anywhere you find that... That major third, just bend it a little half step and it's just got that classy little... Takes it to... Yeah, little yeah. Little thing, right? Um, Very cool. So one that's a little more challenging, I think you could, uh, how about? So I like, I like this legato thing because it's, I'm picking one note on the ninth fret and I'm hammering the 10th and 12th. Right. And to get out of it, I'm. So what I'm doing is one of my favorite legato patterns, I guess I'll use that for the next lick, is going, um, starting with a pattern of five, say if I'm in the key of E, um, and I'm going to go, I'm going to start with a pattern of five, go down with a pattern of seven, continue that pattern of seven all the way down um, so you got to work on your pinky strength those hammers and if you want to take that pattern and move from position to position you just add another set of five so you got five seven seven and then you can shift over with five right so five five seven seven five seven seven and root right and you can try to incorporate that muted thing. So, 
yeah. And you can take that, that idea and kind of move it around the position. So you're actually hammering from nowhere onto the hammering A and from e nowhere. Yeah, yeah, just upstroking the D string. Yeah. I think I might have picked that up from um, Tony McAlpine. Right, right. Uh, I think he did a, uh, if I remember correctly, he did an instructional video back in, in the 80s or 90s, and, and I bought that, and he did that. He didn't do the legato thing, but he just... So, yeah. Cool. Listen, thank you so much for the advice. Thank and you. Uh, my takeaway is I need to practice at least half an hour a day and try and learn something new. Well, not so at least that. Just don't go a day without <laughs> practicing a half hour a day. You should get, you know, one thing somebody told me that really struck home was um, Emil Worcester. He, he, uh, he was like, one of my best students is complaining about hitting a rut. And, and, and uh, I said, well, how many hours, how, how much are you practicing a day? And he goes, two hours. And he goes, it's like, well, two hours really, you know, if you want to be a, a damn fine guitar player, I guess that two hours doesn't really get you across the finish line. With a guy like me, two hours a day, it's like, all right, I got my two hours in. I wouldn't be disappointed in that. But a guy like him, who's, who's this technical genius, two hours to him is nothing. Right. So it it's, depends on what you want. Do you want to be Steve Vai? Do you want to be... Um, depends on how much time you want to put in. I'm sure a guy like Guthrie Govan didn't spend a half hour a day on a guitar. No, I guess it would take a couple of hours just to maintain that level yes, of expertise. Yes. So if you want to get, I think every guitar player needs to go through um, periods of, of inspiration where they're doing six, seven hours a day, playing until your wrist hurts and you just can't play anymore. Those, those periods. And I think that's when you're on to something, when you play, play, play. I think with me in my life, I've gone through those periods and come off them and come on and come off them. Some days I'm just like, ah, I'll play guitar a little bit. Some days I can't wait to play guitar. And I think you need to find that inspiration. Mark, thank you so thank much. You.